good day to all. So our lesson for this day is about inventories. Um, sorry for it was quite late for the uploadings. Hope you were having a good day. Okay, our learning objective for this one would be number one, to define the inventory, determination of cost of inventories, the cost formula, the subsequent recognition as expense, and its disclosure requirements. So what is inventory? Inventory includes asset held for sale in an ordinary course of business. So meaning, these are anything that you are intended to sold or intended to sell to the merchant. So this include finished goods. So what are finished goods? These are if you are in, engaged into an RTW, like for example, if you are selling through online services through wherein the goods are already set or could already be sold, these are what we call now the finished goods. Asset in the production process for sale in an ordinary course of business. So what are this process? For example, you are into processing. For example, you are selling RTWs of clothes. So when the clothes is not yet finished, then these are so-called under production. And then lastly, the work in process. And these are called work in process if they are still under production. And then we also have the supplies and material that are consumed for production. So, for example, the yarn, the clothes, or the cloth, I mean. So, these are things that are under our inventory. So, these are classified into three. Raw materials, for example, if you are into selling of clothes, so the yarn, the cloth, the and other things that you need to use to be able to produce the shirt. And then if it's under in process, if you are already put the clothes, but it's still on the process as to its sleeves, as to its color, it's not yet entirely full or fully finished, then this is now what we call now the work in process. Then when you already have the shirt, then that's what now we call as our finished goods. Okay, so raw materials, as what we said, these are materials or supplies to be consumed in the production or in rendering services. So usually raw materials, these are the basic things that are essential in order for us to produce our end product or the finished product. Like for example, in our YouTube channel, in this when we are still preparing for our slides, for the content, then these are the raw materials. However, since it's YouTube channel don't usually have inventory because what we are catering is our services. Services, I'm meaning our talents. Next, we also have work in process. So work in process, these are goods in process of production for such sale. So for us, if we are, since we are in a YouTube, if we are still putting all the content, we already have the slides, but no voice over yet, and we are not able to put that on our channel, then that's what we call now work in process. And for finished goods, when we already finish all the content, all the voice activations, and we already upload it on the YouTube, then these are now held for sale or meaning in an ordinary course of business or meaning we had already put that on YouTube and it's already copyrighted under our name by the channel. Because, because it was already known to the public that it was pertaining or being conceptualized on our part. Next, we also have each item for inventory is valued at. Usually, when we buy inventory, we normally value it at cost, meaning the amount on which we paid for us to be able to get that product. So, for example, if you are into an RTW, you buy a shirt at 20 pesos, then that's the cost. As for us, in our YouTube channel, the cost would be the electricity, the time we we input on the on the channel or the concept, and then if we have some we have we will be able to hire some content creator, the graphics creator. These are all pertaining to the cost. Because without those people, we were not able to put our activities or what we wanted to cater to our viewers. However, in the inventory, but for us, it's not like that. We also have the net realizable value because an inventory item, since nowadays, because of the deflation, because of the economic downturn, 
uh, some of the inventory become obsolete as the years pass by. Like for example, our gadget, before we had bought it for 10,000 and then after a certain period, it only goes like 5,000 and still new. Then we would now record an impairment because the valuation of inventory could either be cost or net realizable value, whichever is lower. So meaning if you bought this t-shirt at 20 and then after economic downtrend and what other activities is, it went down to 15 pesos, then you have to value that inventory at 15 pesos. Because nobody would want to buy it at 20. Okay? So what are the causes of inventory? So the cost of inventory shall comprise of cost of purchases. So meaning what we bought. The cost of conversion and other costs incurred in bringing the inventories to their present location. So, since we have the three different kinds of business, number one is the service business on which as YouTuber are under, are under because we were creating our talent, our services, our knowledge to the public. Then what are the costs under that? So, number one, we have the cost of purchases. The purchases means these are our content creator our graphic creator, our staff who were able to be directly to help us on the content. This is what now under the purchase price. For our merchandising, the one who, who bought goods and then sell goods, the amount that they bought for that particular product. These are now the purchase, the purchase price. For example, they went there to get the product, so that's the transportation in. It's part of the purchase price because without going on that, on that certain place, you will not be able to get the product, okay? So, how about our uh, manufacturing industry? Example are those who are creating condos, condominium. So, the purchase price include the purchase of the land, the purchase of the buildings, and then the services or the people working for that particular building would also be part of the purchase price. Now, we also have the cost of conversion. So, for us, we have the cost of conversion. So, for our services or YouTuber, the cost of conversion would be the time we could be uploading the entity because it would incur electricity, it would also incur, um, what do you call this, the internet, and so on and so forth. Because usually, the conversion costs include the labor in the factory overhead. The labor is the one that we working, so it's the manpower. We had already discussed this in our cost production or the cost concept. Then we also have the so-called overhead. And overhead, these are small amounts that are essential in bringing the product to its, to its finished good. Like for example, the electricity, the water, the stuff that are needed for that. So those are for our YouTuber. For the merchandising, these are their storage because they wouldn't be needing storage so that the goods would be safeguarded. And then for the production, the quality control assurance. So anything that are essential in bringing this product into readily available in the market. So like for example, if you are into condominium and there are some small establishment in there and you had to dismantle it. So these are also calls of conversion. Why? Because you cannot convert that particular place into a condominium without dismantling those previous properties that are standing on that land. Okay? And other costs incurred in bringing the inventories to its present locations. Because sometimes, we have long location or the transportation in. So, meaning if you had to bring the product to other thing. Or like, for example, the installation. If you are into uh, computer shops. Or if you are into some of the gadgets. So, the installation would also be part of the so-called cost of inventories. Okay? So, cost of purchases, cost of conversion, because we know what is cost of conversion involved, direct labor and factory overhead, and then other costs, such as the license that are essentials, the government permits, the import duties, and any other things that are needed in order to be able to this product be legally sold in your entity, okay? So, since we already know what are the costs included in our cost of inventory and these are our purchase price or the amount that we needed to bring the product to us, like the license, the import duties, or the amount that we paid for that particular product, 
we now check what are the different costs that are not, not now to be excluded because it's detrimental. Because some costs are really not because of the inventory but because of our negligence us, as the person who need to handle this particular product. So what are these? Number one is the abnormal amount of wastage material, labor, or other protection. For example, if you are into uh, printing something and then you wanted this this a little the printing or like printing activities and you want a little cost to be a little bit cheaper you use band paper that is substandard so you think you are be able to to save some of its cost but unfortunately this this substandard product costs a lot of wastages and then when you computed it it's more than the usual cost that is attributable to that. Because it's our negligence, then it should not, the inventory should not suffer it and should be excluded as cost of inventory and must be treated as expense. Okay? So, meaning abnormal wastage of material would now be expense. For example, if you were to deliver and then you were able to negligently put the address differently and then the delivery was wasn't good or the delivery didn't come in on your place on another place then you have to to check it out so those are not part of the cost of inventory because these are abnormal wastages okay next the storage cost so the storage cost is not also part of the cost of inventory especially if it's too much that's why if you would remember in japan they had invent they had invented the so-called economic order point wherein you had to you, you so that you would not be having too much cost on the storage you just need to determine at what point you need to order so that you would be able to save on storage costs these are economic reorder point or so we, we would be discussing that on other on our other topic then the administrative overhead that do not contribute to bringing the inventory to the present location and condition so these are for example, if you put some guard to secure that property, these are administrative overhead. Okay? <coughs> and lastly, the selling cost. So, the advertising, the promotions, and then your activities to to sold your channel and to tell the world that this is yours. So, that's some of the some of the subscriber would be going to your channel. So, these are now our promotional campaign and selling costs and not part of our cost of inventory. Okay? And these are all to be treated as expense. Okay? So, the cost formula include, so usually we have the FIPO method. So, FIPO method from the word is first in, first out. So, meaning when you sold an inventory, the value or the cost of the inventory should always be first in, first out. Then we also have the weighted average. Since sometimes, especially if your product is coming from foreign and subject to some forex gain exchange or that the value is very volatile, some would use the weighted average because you just need to add the product, to, to add the inventory, all the inventory, and then divide it by the, by the total cost of the inventory. I'll give you some con computation on this one on our other videos. We also have the LIFO, the last in, last out. So, for example, if it's about, some probably for the, so usually the last in, last out was previously used. Probably these are for the antique collectors because as the antique grows a little bit longer or a little bit becoming a little bit old, it will become more expensive. So, usually, probably for that. But now, it has been abolished because it is rarely used in the business. Next, we also have the specific identification. So, normally, the specific identification, these are not normally used, but, but usually used for the customized product because you had to identify which one is really to be sold for that art particular entity. Like, for example, if you are into preparation of uh, gowns, so this is for specific identification because each gown would specifically or designed for a particular bride. Okay? 
And then what's the net realizable value? The net realizable value we expect to gain on the sales of inventory. So usually this is the computation for the net realizable value. It's the estimated selling price less the estimated cost of completion. So the amount that you would do for so that it could be readily sold. Like for example, if you repossess. And then the cost necessary to make it for sale. Okay, so usually these are our repossessions. So how do we recognize as expense? When the inventories are sold, the carrying amount shall be recognized as expense in the period in which it is the related revenue is recognized. So this is also in accordance with our accrual methods. So normally we, when we sold the items or the inventory, we would also recognize the cost of sale for that particular product. For example, if your channel is already monetized, you would have to now now deduct so that you would be able to know how much is the how much is the profit you earn for for the channel by checking out the electric bills that are are attributable to your activity, the internet bills, and then the promotion. I uh, know that the, the promotion is other expenses, and then your payment to yourself, so that you would be able to know if you are really really profiting on the activities. Next, the amount of any net write down of the inventories to net realizable value, all losses of inventory shall be recognized as expense. So, for example, if the inventories become obsolete, like for example, if you were still have cell phone the thirty two ten, then you know that the thirty two ten is almost none no value at all so you had to so nokia probably write this down to expense or some of the phones that if you would see most phones of the old version would be on sale because it is now right down to the net realizable value and the company already recognized expenses for that then the amount of any reversal of the write down shall be a reduction to the expense amount so we just wanted to correlate because any reversal or any recovery for that matter would now be part of the expense so that the inventory would now be lesser for that expense, okay? So the entry would be for the recognition or for the write-down would now be debit impairment loss on inventory and then allowance for impairment loss of inventory. Take note, the impairment loss inventory is a temporary account that is close to our income statement account. Whereas the allowance for impairment of inventories is a balance sheet account and a contra asset account. So that we will be able to know if this inventory have recoveries in the future. Okay? Next. How about when we reverse? So when we reverse, we will just debit allowance for impairment loss and then credit reversal on impairment loss. If it's within the year. If it's not, then we could check on the reversal instead of the reversal of loss on impairment we would now put on our equity account. Okay? So the disclosure requirement by the IAS or the International Accounting Board would be number one, the total amount in classification appropriate to the entity. Because take note, we have three classifications. We have the raw materials, we have the work in process, and then the manufacturing. And another thing is a lot of entity now sold multiple products. So you had to classify it in an appropriate entity or in the appropriate account for the disclosure so that the user of the financial statement would not be confused on which one still have a lot of number of inventory. And then the carrying amount at fair value less cost to sell. So because these are for the impairment, how much is the value of this product today and how much would you incur in order to sell that inventory? And then the amount of, re of inventory that are recognized expense during the period. Or normally, this is our cost of sales. Okay? And any write-down of the inventory is recognized as expense for the period. So that you would know if this inventory is invaluable or no value at all. Then any reversal of the inventory in the circumstances that lead to the reversal. Like, for example, uh, technological development, if there are some. Or, for example, the government said it cannot anymore be sold. 
So these are what we call now our reasons for this. And then the carrying amount pledged to secure a liability because some inventory could be garnished or the government or other creditor could get that so that we will be able to pay down our liabilities to them. Okay, so that's it. So if you like this video, please help me reach out more people by hitting the subscribe and the like button below. God bless you all and keep safe. If you have questions, just comment below. Thank you.